me. So this is my vacuum cleaner that at this point is slowly dying. You see, first you had to remove its internal battery pack because its capacity was dropping quickly and instead replaced it with a Makita battery adapter and fitting battery pack. And then also the suction power of this thing decreased for reasons unknown. And that was the moment my girlfriend said, just throw this thing away and get a new one. I need a better vacuum cleaner. And yes, she talks with subtitles. But anyway, I didn't feel like throwing this thing away. Because not only is e-waste becoming more and more of a problem nowadays, but also because I have tons of motors laying around looking for a job. And all that is left for a vacuum motor to work is a fitting impeller, which is also just plastic that I can 3D print right at home. So in this video, in order to celebrate Earth Day, I will challenge myself to create my own vacuum cleaner motor out of things that I have laying around at home in order to hopefully renew my vacuum cleaner. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by the Element 14 community, which does all kinds of awesome electronic how-tos, giveaways, contests, videos and much more. Definitely check them out. And this time I will be part of the team. So feel free to head over to the Element 14 community to get more details about this project or ask questions. I will see you there. Now first off, I had to find out what my vacuum was still capable of for reference. And for that I used such an anemometer that basically tells me how fast the integrated fan spins in meter per second. And with a freshly charged battery pack that outputs around 20 volts, I was able to reach a speed of around 4.8 meter per second normally. And when we take this thing apart and position the meter as close as possible to the impeller, we get around 5.5, which are the values I will need to beat. To do that, I firstly gathered my collection of brushless DC motors. Now the big difference to the so far used brush DC motor of my vacuum is, like the name implies, the utilized carbon brushes. That do create some sparks while the motor is rotating. Those sparks not only shorten the lifespan of such a DC motor, but also its efficiency, which will be an advantage of my BLDC motor system if it works out in the end. But before getting to that, I first had to decide on one motor. And the most important criteria for that is the RPM. You see, the faster such a vacuum cleaner impeller spins, the more suction power gets created. Meaning we want something at least as fast as the original motor, that spins with approximately 26,000 RPM. Now to get the RPM from a BLDC motor, we got the KV rating, that multiplied by the voltage equals our RPM. So we need something like 1300 KV. Sadly though, the closest motor I got that came with a similar size and power rating as the original one only came with 900 KV, which will hopefully be enough, we will see. And last but not least, of course, to let the motor spin, we also need an ESC, of which I pretty much only had two fitting ones because of the high voltage applied by the battery pack. And initially, I wanted to use this super basic one, since it only requires a potentiometer to adjust the speed. But as you can see, it didn't want it to cooperate, so it flew right back into its drawer. So instead, I went with this one which, as you can see, performs wonderfully. And the only problem with it is that it requires a servo control signal to fine adjust the speeds, which is common for ECs though and about which we will worry about later. Because for now we got a fitting motor spinning and I was getting fired up to make my own impeller. But as soon as I realized that there are several kinds of impeller designs, I was first off very confused. But eventually I decided on such a specific centrifugal design, 
because it not only looks cool, but also because our sea test flight tested such a design in a video and it performed pretty well. Definitely check that out. So I started my CAD software and had immediately no idea how to pull this off. Because so far I've only been designing fancy boxes for electronics projects. But thankfully YouTube is there for you when you need to learn something new. And thus after taking some real world measurements of my old motor, impeller, vacuum enclosure and new BLDC motor, I created my first rough prototypes which includes the impeller and motor mounts. And after 3D printing them with PLA filaments, I was rather happy to see that the motor fit perfectly inside the holder as well as the impeller on it. Meaning it was time for the first test run. Which came with a bit of excessive rubbing that you can clearly hear, but we still got an airflow going. Nice. So after checking that my mounting tabs on the 3D print would fit inside the vacuum enclosure, which they did perfectly, I once again hopped over to my CAD software to improve the motor mount with air holes and create a top piece for it all, which ultimately all together looked like this. And after once again 3D printing everything and assembling it all, this time with all the screws in place for safety and balance reasons, I was rather happy about the results, which fit very snugly and satisfying inside the vacuum enclosure. So it was time for the first proper test, which initially started out very promising, by reaching a speed of 4.5 meter per second with an input power of around 54 watts, which in direct comparison to the vacuum motor from before, that are of course also measured at different power levels, would equal a power drop of around 40 watts for the same suction power. Nice. But sadly, this success turned into a failure nightmare very quickly. Because after 2 minutes of testing, the system became very loud, unstable and vibrated. The reason for that was that the impeller got more or less stuck. And the first reason for that was that the motor got very hot and therefore deformed the PLA filament. The second reason though was even worse, because it appears like some magnets of the motor's rotor got pushed downwards and thus hindered the motor's movements, which is honestly something I've never seen before when it comes to BLDC motors. My solution for now though was pushing the magnets back into place and redesigning the motor mount with more vent holes, to which I later also added some more manually. And in case you're wondering why the motor mount is suddenly black, let me tell you that I switched over to ABS filaments, because it should be able to handle higher temperatures without warping. And after the assembly was once again complete, which this time I had to complement with a bit of hot glue so that the top stays in place, it was time for another test round, which once again started out promising, but quickly came with the same vibration problem as before. This time though, the temperature of the motor was still in the acceptable range, and pretty much the only problem this time was that once again a magnet came loose. So I had no other choice than to take the motor apart, reposition all the magnets, and mix up strong two component adhesive to hopefully permanently mount them all in place. And as soon as the glue was dry and a bit filed down, I put it back together, tested it out and once again assembled the whole motor construction once again to also once again find out that this thing still did not work perfectly fine. This time it seems like the top piece was too narrow, meaning redesign time and while I was at it, I 3D printed the remaining parts in ABS as well. And with that being done, I moved on to finally a successful test, in which I reached a speed of 5 meter per second without too much trouble or problems. And that was my cue to move this whole project into the vacuum enclosure. But of course, my servo signal generator was a bit too big for that. To replace it, I used an old Arduino Pro Mini board I had laying around, to which I simply added a potentiometer 
and some Arduino codes in order to let it spit out an adjustable servo signal. After then drilling a hole for the potentiometer and securing it in place along with some nice labels, all there was left to do was wiring everything up, closing everything up and getting ready for the last tests, in which I went up to 100% aka 120 watts at 20 volts. With that, the vacuum reached a speed of 4.5 meter per second, which is sadly a bit less than what the original motor could do, but it also drew 60 watts less power to do that. So all in all, this is obviously not a perfect result, but for me definitely a big success, because this was all try and error for me, since I'm not a mechanical engineer. And in case you're wondering, my girlfriend said that the difference to the original motor is sadly noticeable, and she requested a better solution, which I will hopefully come up with soon. But anyway, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're looking for more suction power and want to test some things on your own, then you can always try out a higher KB BLDC motor. As always, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.